Hello, YouTubers. Well, I'm updating another old video of mine. Uh, way back, years ago, eight years ago, I think, um, I did a video on uh, how I do videos. <laughs> it's a question I get from time to time. And this video is hopelessly out of date now. I've learned so much since then. I've used, I used better tools. And I use completely open source and free tools for everything I do even down to the OS on the computers. There's no commercial software at all in uh, anything that I use. And so let's talk about how I make videos using free and open source tools that you can also use. They are all cross-platform, work on all three platforms, Linux, Windows, and Mac. And uh, we'll go right through the whole steps uh, from gathering media to uh, processing and editing and preparing media to the final edit and the editing suite that I use. So let's get started first with cameras. I'm filming right now with my Google Pixel 9a cell phone, which I use for the talking head shots. For other shots, I have a GoPro Hero 5, a couple of webcams, and my Canon SX70HS Super Zoom camera. This I suspend over the workbench for the bench shots, and I use outdoors for antenna shots and wildlife and other things. If I need to do multi-camera shots, uh, like in some videos where I need to show myself, for example, tuning an antenna while also showing the display on a, on a uh, Nano VNA, I'll use um, like the Hero 5 on a small tripod. I have a couple of these smaller tripods that I can put on a bench or a desk. I've got uh, three regular size tripods I also use. And um, for audio, I've had this for, gosh, 12, 13, 14 years, maybe longer. It's an Ederall or Roland R09. And I use a lavalier mic uh, when I use this to record my voice to get clear audio. So that's what I use to capture media. Now, once I've gathered media uh, from different sources, I need to pre-process some of it. Audio files I need to pre-process in order to make sure that they have consistent levels throughout the video so my audio level doesn't change and go up and down segment to segment. Video clips I don't generally have to pre-process uh, aside from audio. I might extract the audio out of a video clip in order to pre-process the audio for that clip separately before editing. So as I'm beginning on this exact video that you are now watching, I have some media that I have shot, my talking head parts here. and. A segment on cameras which you would probably have already seen. Now first thing I'm going to need to do is pre-process the audio for all of these. I want to make sure I have consistent audio throughout my uh, final video. So what I do is I take them and I open them with Audacity. Now Audacity is a kind of a go-to popular free and open sourced audio editor that's very capable and I use it uh, to normalize all of the audio for my video tracks so that throughout the video that you watch the audio levels remain pretty much the same. And these are recordings from the cell phone and one thing about the Pixel is it records a very low audio level as you can see here. This is, this is very very low. So I'll, uh, first thing I'll do is I'll add a little bit of compression to it to give it just a little bit of punch. I sometimes tend to speak dynamically, sometimes quietly and sometimes loudly. So I tend to add just a little bit of compression to sort of give it a little punch and equalize it. And then I would normalize the audio to a level. But I can see right here, if we look at this right here, there's a spike. See that? So I'm going to reduce the amplification of that spike. That's just a click or something and that's going to limit me being able to normalize the entire clip because it's louder than the rest of the clip. So I have to go through sometimes and do some tweaking like that. So I'll come in here and I'll just use the amplify and reduce it. And now if I zoom back out, you can still see that spike but it's no louder than the loudest peak of audio over here. So I'm going to normalize the audio. Normalizing brings um, everything up to a point. 
not not you know it doesn't amplify the quiet parts as much i mean it's it's uh it brings the loudest parts of the audio up to a, a point that you specify so i'm going to bring peaks right here you can see normalized peak amplitude to negative 0.1 db and that's going to there we go so now the loudest parts of the uh, audio come up to just below maximum so that's what i do i have to pre-process the audio for each clip and then i'll export them as a separate audio file into the same directory as the video clip and i've already renamed the clips so i'll end up with an audio clip with the same name as the video clip that it is, is associated with and then when i go to do my edits i will substitute the audio um, that comes in the video clip with this processed audio and we should have nice clean and normalized audio throughout the video so audacity it's a great little uh, audio editor again free and open source if you don't have it in your toolbox, it's definitely worth downloading. Every program that I mention will have a link in the video description. Let's talk about graphics. I still like to use GIMP. Now, people that like to use Photoshop uh, will probably not like GIMP right off the bat because they'll expect it to act like Photoshop, but it's not Photoshop. It's a different program. And the key to success with learning GIMP is to not expect it to be what it is not. <laughs> So I like to use GIMP. Um, I find that it is quite, quite capable for working on graphics, for editing things and manipulating, moving things around, compositing things together. As I'm doing here for the opening title card for this very video, where I'm currently arranging my icons here for the different programs that I use, and I'll try to come up with something that fits everything in there. And I've got a Blender logo here, so I'm going to copy that go over here and I'll paste it over the background as a new layer so there's the blender icon we'll find a place to put it maybe about there um, actually you know I think I want to get tux in here too since uh, this is Linux and this Caden live icon is a little bit large so I'm gonna scale that down a little bit too so GIMP makes working with graphics pretty easy once you learn it and it's really not that hard to work with it's pretty straightforward and it's, as I said, quite a capable graphics program. And now I've got Tux in here that I want to get in here too, so let's copy him. And uh, we'll paste him as a layer. And we'll find a place to put him over here in the corner perhaps, and I'll bring him in front of this guy. Over here in the layers, I'll bring him up in front of that waterfall layer. And let's see, we'll move the Blender logo over. And I think that's starting to look good right there. Now I just need to add my text. So yeah, GIMP, um, it, it's a very good, very powerful image editor. I'm barely scratching the surface at what it can do. But I find it quite adequate for doing my title graphics and occasional on-screen overlays. Um, I also use Blender sometimes for 3D uh, manipulation. That's new. I've uh, started doing motion graphics with Blender in some videos. And those of you that have followed the channel for a while might have noticed that. So now we need to come up with a title for this video. <clears throat> My video production open source workflow. How about that? I think that works. And let's make that a little bit bigger. About there. Center it up a little. There we go. And uh, let's see, do I want to bring Audacity over a little here, maybe, and bring this down? In fact, let's, uh, let's let the Audacity uh, icon encroach on... Which one is that? I didn't name these. I should have named these. Ah, this one. Let's let that encroach on my title bar a little bit. How does that look? I think that looks good for a thumbnail image. Yeah, we'll use that. So, sometimes I also will use Inkscape, which is, this is the icon for Inkscape here. It's a vector graphics program um, that I've used in several videos. Uh, it is something similar to Adobe Illustrator, and it's quite good. Definitely worth adding to your toolbox. Uh, you can use it to draw vector graphics, which are 
Um, vectors are mathematically defined shapes and lines and circles and squares and such, so they are infinitely scalable and they're useful for all kinds of things where you need to scale graphics up and down but have the resolution stay the same. They're also, it's also useful for uh, working along with other programs like FreeCAD. I use it sometimes to pre-process geometry for FreeCAD. But uh, that's, a, that's another good one. All right, I think this looks good. This will be the thumbnail for the video. And then I do this in GIMP. And then I'll just export this as a JPEG into my folder for this video. So there we go. We are now ready with the thumbnail for the video. So that's GIMP. A great program for doing graphics. So now that I've got all of the media pre-processed, captured, and ready to go, the final step is, of course, editing. And this is KDEN Live, my favorite video editor. It has tons of capabilities and effects. I mean, if we go over here to the Effects tab, we have just tons of effects in here that we can use. It's, uh, I guess, the similarity to, would be to something like Sony Vegas. Now there are other video editors. There's uh, things. There's like DaVinci Resolve has a free version, but it's commercial, and I try to stay away from commercial software. There's OpenShot and Shotcut, and some people like those. I don't really like their methodologies, the way that they work. I find them more difficult to work in. I like KDEN Live. Uh, it's a timeline video editor, as you can see down here on the timeline. So I've got my default opener here, and I'm ready to start putting my video project together. I'm going to pull in that thumbnail first off, and we go up here and we go say uh, Add Clip. And there's my thumbnail. And we just simply drag things down here to the timeline and drop them in where we want them to be. So I've already got a wipe in here for this thumbnail, and if we run this... So the first thing I need to do is bring in my first talking headpiece. And I'm going to show you one of the things I really like about KDEN Live. It does have some hardware acceleration. It's using the NVIDIA chip in my, uh, the NVIDIA GPU to do some of the processing, which makes it faster. So I have my talking head here. And as I said, I pre-processed a lot of the audio because this audio is very low level. And so I have the pre-processed audio here. And I just like to organize things in my timeline a certain way. So I'm going to ungroup these clips and pull the built-in audio down and bring in my processed audio. And uh, one thing that was really tough on earlier video editors I used was getting things lined up, getting things synced up. I mean, you can think you're close but you can be off just a little bit and you get that um, that Japanese kung fu over um, English dubbed voice kind of effect where the mouth doesn't quite follow the words. Well, Kden Live has a really nice feature. I'm going to take the original track here that was tied to the video and I'm going to come up here to Align to Reference and Set Audio Reference. And it does a quick little calculation and now if I take my imported clip and I right click on it and go to Align to Reference, Align Audio to Reference, it's going to analyze that clip and it's going to perfectly line it up with the other clip. Boom. So now this is perfectly in sync with the video. I can delete the built-in audio clip and now I'm ready to um, put it into place. And I have a count in and I think this is probably where the audio starts. Hello YouTubers. Yep. So we'll pull this back to right about there. I'll pull this back temporarily to the same spot. Select both of these and pull it over. So my audio of me talking starts right there when the music ends, but I want this wipe to be just a little bit later, about there, and we'll add a dissolve, just like that. So now we have... Hello YouTubers. Well, I'm updating another old video of mine. And just like that, we've added the clip. Now, I'm going to go out and find another piece of media or two. I think at one point I talked about um, the old video. So I'm going to go get the thumbnail from the old video so that I can overlay it in here when I talk about it. I'll be right back. Okay, I went and pulled up a clip of my old video. And there's the thumbnail that I used. And we're going to insert that in here. So let's see, I think I'm near the spot. How I do videos. <laughs> it's a question I get from time to time. 
and this video is yeah right there was where I was gesturing to it so we'll fade it in about here so I'll bring the clip down we'll put it there we'll add a dissolve to the beginning of it and then we'll figure out how long we want to leave it in there time to time and okay it needs to be smaller and in the corner so here we can use an effect I'm going to insert the transform effect this lets me resize and move things around on the screen so we'll come down here to size and we'll shrink it up and let's move it and we need to shrink it some more and we'll put it about about there alright let's see how that looks time and this video is hopelessly out of date now I've learned so much since then and I've used I and right about there I think I want to fade out so we'll bring this over to here we'll add our dissolve for the fade out then I've used I use better tools so there you go that's how we do our editing here in Caden live we have multiple video tracks we can add more as we need them and audio tracks and we just do dissolves and fades between them or cut things up and move them around sometimes I have to edit out the occasional uh, extra uh, bit and I can simply chop um, I could take this clip here, for example, and uh, chop it, and then move it over to make space to insert things, or to uh, edit out something. I could could pull this back to say here, and then bring it in. You know, I could edit out a piece, or add in a piece. Um, you know, so it's it's a full nonlinear editor. And once I'm done editing, I simply render to my uh, final video file and uh, this again we'll use hardware acceleration for that for the encoding when I'm rendering it'll use the NVIDIA GPU to do the uh, encoding so it goes much quicker this will actually on this machine here this this higher performance machine it will render a video at upwards of uh, two to three hundred frames per second at times almost ten times real-time speed um, so it's a, it's a very nice and quick video editor so that's Kaden Live that's the video editor I use so you don't need to buy commercial software if you want to produce videos. You don't even need to buy an operating system. You can use Linux and open source software for everything. So that's how I make videos with open source free tools, including the operating system. Um, I only run Linux on all my computers. I've been able to produce a whole range of uh, videos, and some have really complex edits, and some are real simple. And uh, I think the quality is okay. Um, I still could, of course, improve. I could invest more in lights and maybe better cameras. Uh, for some things but I'm not focused on the absolute pristine quality of the image and audio I'm focused on the content you know I, I don't shoot in 4k I uh, as I think I might have mentioned that I don't shoot in 4k I do everything in HD uh, I don't see a reason to you know I don't need you to be able to count the number of pores on my nose I get enough comments about you should have shaved today and stuff like that anyway <laughs> so uh, it, it's there's really no benefit there it just makes more data to have to process and there's no reason for that so um, there are ways that I could do produce higher quality videos but I think that the content is what's important and that's what I try to focus on and um, not too much about the flash and, and shine but I think the quality is okay um, it, you know if, if you're interested in getting into producing your own videos you don't really need super expensive equipment and you certainly don't need to spend any money on software uh, all the software is there that you need so I hope you found that useful, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.